and action. Ow! Hey, it's Kevin and Fred. Do you have a referral for us here in Phoenix? There are 30,000 agents here that you could send them to. Why us? Well, for one thing, we'll keep you updated and you'll never have to track down your commission. We'll also make you look really good to your client. And best of all, it helps us keep all this content free. So go to kevinandfred.com slash referral to make the introduction. We'll take great care of them. All right, guys, we're back uh, with the Kevin and Fred show. And this week I am joined by Chris Sowersoff of World Class Title and Safewire in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Chris, how are you doing today, man? Great, Kevin. I appreciate uh, being able to chat with you today. Yeah, awesome, man. I'm, uh, I'm glad to have this opportunity. Uh, we were connected by a mutual friend, Dustin Brome, uh, who is, is a good buddy of mine. I actually just saw him uh, a couple of days ago here in Arizona for something, and uh, I'm glad he connected us so we could have a chance to uh, chat today on the podcast. Yeah, for sure. Dustin's a great, great guy, and I, I, uh, he spoke of you very highly, so I look forward to this as well. That's good. I pay him monthly to, to make sure he says good things Wait, about it, me. Whatever yeah. it takes, Kevin. I'm not here to judge. Yeah, me too. You know, same, like whatever we got to do right now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Chris, I guess let's, if you don't mind, let's start like how, you know, I think you, you mentioned to me when we were talking earlier, you've been in the real estate world for gosh, what, 15, 16 years now. I think you said 2004. Um, kind of tell me about that. Like, like why, why'd you get into real estate and what's that path look like? Oh man. So I actually have an industrial design degree from the Columbus College of Art and Design. <clears throat> and I was doing design work for a while. And uh, around 2004, I had a couple friends that were in the mortgage business and wanted to start a mortgage company. Um, they knew how to sell mortgages, but they didn't know how to do things like set up email accounts or turn on phone systems or make anything work. So, that, so, so the three of us uh, became partners. We started a mortgage company and after about a year and a half of that business, I realized uh, I hated it. <laughs> so uh, we were really successful, but I just didn't like that side of the business. It wasn't for me. Um, so I, I left that and got a sales license. So I was a real estate uh, sales agent for a while, commercial agent for a while, and investor in the, in the market blew up in 2008. So um, <clears throat> I landed in title. You know, no, I, I landed in title because I needed a gig. I needed to survive. Yeah. I got a notary license. I traveled all around the state to, um, to close people with their refinances and their loans and that sort of thing. And um, I learned a ton. I learned a ton about, um, I think the thing I learned the most through that process was that I learned what, uh, what people were afraid of, what their fears were. I learned what they were when they sat down to have a closing, that experience, what that should feel like for them, how we treat them, how we interact with consumers, and really uh, got good at it. And then I got into title sales and built a sales team and eventually became an owner of uh, World Class Title where I am now. Awesome, okay, so that that was gonna be my next question. So World Class Title, uh, that's, so that's your company. Obviously you didn't just go right into owning a title company. It sounds like you actually did a lot of different things there in title. and really kind of worked work your way up and around uh, the industry, which is always cool to have those different perspectives of truthfully how our, how our industries, how our jobs, if you will, work, uh, you know, running these businesses. Yeah, I always, I always tell people that if you're thinking about getting in the real estate, title is actually a, a great place to get in uh, because it's, 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 it's very infrequent that a lot of folks actually know what it is we do, right? Yeah. And so, and, and if you want to be on the sales side, you know, this in a lot of ways, like that closing statement and what we do, like that's our product, at least for the title agency. And so it's important that we can uh, help the consumer understand what it is they're actually doing in the largest financial investment they're likely to make in their life. So it's, it's, it's huge. Awesome. Well, so uh, I'm, I'm going to give away the punchline early and I'm probably sure anybody who read the title list kind of, kind of already picked up on that. So what I, what I really want to talk about though is, is what's right over your shoulder there, SafeWire, right? So, cause wire fraud has just been something that has been so big, uh, you know, in recent years in our industry. So, you know, I'd love if we could kind of talk about wire fraud um, and then obviously we we'll want to transition into, you know, SafeWire and just kind of where that comes in and, and how it can prevent it, what we can do as agents. Yeah, well, and, and Kevin, to be honest, like I'd much rather not be talking about wire fraud. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'd much rather be talking about, you know, how we create better consumer experiences and grow our business together. Um, 
the reason we are though talking about it is to be honest, it just scares the crap out of me. Um, back in 2016 is really where this started to get on our radar. And we saw what we were seeing is we were seeing um, title agencies sending seller proceeds to fraudsters. And it was wild how it started, it seemed to come out of nowhere and nobody really understood what was happening or how it was happening. So I really, uh, for me, I got, I, I, I went heads down into that problem because it terrified me, it terrified me as a business owner, how one mistake could cost our, could put us out of business. And um, not, not only our reputational risk and, and how it affects the consumer and everything else, but just from a, from a business owner standpoint. So <clears throat> what's, what's been going on and what's happening is that uh, last year, about one in 450 real estate transactions reported a wire fraud activity or loss. Uh, over 12, so over 12, uh, almost 12,000 uh, reported wire fraud losses were sent to the FBI last year. Wow. Uh, it was over $221 million just in real estate related wire fraud loss. Uh, and that number is growing. And so since COVID, since the last, you know, since March, uh, phishing attempts have gone up. Anytime there's a natural disaster, fraud attempts go up. We have a global disaster happening right now. Fraud attempts are up. <clears throat> so what's happening and what I've really been fascinated by is who's doing this? Who's doing this? Why can't we stop it? What's actually going on? Well, the folks behind this are the same folks that have been doing the business email compromise scams for the last 20, 25 years where they uh, pretend they're in some cases a distant family relative that has a million dollars of your money in an account and you is, send them. Is this like the Nigerian bank scam type? Of, is that what you're saying? Exactly. Who's doing this? Whoa. So okay. They have just morphed into real estate. They've, connected the dots and figured out that there's opportunity here. <clears throat> so these are primarily uh, uh, Western Africa, Nigerian based uh, uh, fraudsters. And what's different this time is they they're partnering with hacker groups out of India and Pakistan who are doing the phishing scams. So they're actually doing the technology behind this, the phishing attempts to real estate agents, brokers, agents, title companies, consumers, and then when they get that information successfully, they then pass it along to these partners in Western Africa who pretend they're someone they really aren't. Wow. It's not incred incredibly sophisticated, but it's incredibly effective. And so now our industry is under attack. Like we're, we're all collectively, uh, whether you're on the mortgage side, the real estate agent side, or on the title side, we are our targets. We're not gonna stop being targets. It's why we can't stop it because it's outside of our federal jurisdiction. <clears throat> so I do a lot with the FBI in this and the FBI is once the money leaves our, uh, our federal jurisdiction, the FBI, there's very little they can do. And these guys are experts at moving money internationally. It's why it's, escal it's, it's escalated so quickly. Um, and so, so I, I'm out there uh, up uh, on the, uh, uh, on the stump, uh, screaming from the rooftops about this problem, because where else as an industry are we losing $221 million a year of consumers' monies and not talking about this? Yeah, you know, I, uh, gosh, I wish I remember who, well, I wouldn't say their name if I did, um, but I, I've, I've got a friend in the industry who had a client think they were wiring the title company uh, for, it was like down payment proceeds, and it was like $200,000, and like, poof, it was gone. Like, you just they were scammed. And um, it's, I mean, it's crazy to me to think how much this is happening and going, I think you said one in every 450 transactions had, had some sort of wire fraud involved. Yeah. I mean, last year it was almost 12,000 and, you know, we do five and a half million residential real estate transactions a year. So, you know, do the math. It's, it's, it's about one four fifty. Um, so it's, it's, it's happening. It's, it's, it's wild. What's scary to me about this is that, uh, most folks I talk to don't understand their liability if and when this were to happen. It's like one of the frustrating things for me is this is almost like um, trying to convince people to wear seatbelts who have never been in a car accident. You know, 
Like yeah. when I'm sure, you know, we're around the same age growing up in the eighties, we saw, we had the crash test dummy TV commercials and, you know, people weren't wearing seatbelts in the seventies and early eighties until we eventually had to change the laws or now you can't get in a car without putting a seatbelt on or it'll drive you crazy. Right. <clears throat> so, so there's this very slow moving train that's getting faster and faster heading towards us. And my concern is if the consumer loses confidence in what, we do as an industry with their monies and not keeping their money safe in a real estate transaction. So, so let me ask you this. So like as an agent, um, like, okay. What are, I guess, let me, I guess really what my question is obviously like the results. So someone wires money to the wrong place or they get, they get scammed. Um, you know, a very, uh, obviously it's the consumer that's out the money, right? It, that affects the agent though. I'm, I'm guessing in multiple, multiple ways. Um, number one, it could just be like, dude, it's gone. They might feel the need to replace the money themselves. Um, they may, it could just be that, okay, great. Now the transaction's gone. There's no way to, to find this because that, you know, maybe that was all of the consumer's money. Um, so I, I can see how this really affects a lot of people, the consumer, obviously. So hopefully that didn't sound like too brash and like not caring about the consumer because it is the consumer that is mostly hurt here. Um, but it, but it affects all parties, right? I mean, this, we're talking about title lenders in a lot of cases and obviously agents and then, and, and, and of course the consumers. Um, but I mean, am I missing someone else? Is this affecting other people? And or what are some of the other effects that maybe we don't think about or don't see? As you said, like, because maybe we haven't been in a car wreck yet. Yeah. Well, it's worse than that if you're the agent, because here's what happens. So generally it's like, um, so I always tell people that the potential for wire fraud loss happens at the listing. Like it happens at the very beginning of the transaction. Cause once you list something, it's now disseminated on the internet and the fraudsters know there's a home, they know there's an address, they know there's a seller, they know there's a real estate agent. That's where the fraud potentially begins. So now so here's what's happening. Um, uh, uh, one general practice that is something no agent should be doing full stop is sharing wire instructions on behalf of a consumer or a title agency. Right. But I'll tell you, we both know it's happening all the time. Regardless of what brokers put in their policies, regardless of what they say, people transaction and, and, and plenty of people right now are guilty of it. Yep. And so now if, if, and when that happens, that agent can be personally liable if a fraud loss occurs, if they, if they sent the wrong wire instructions to a buyer, for example, uh, the e because everyone thinks, well, I have this E&O care coverage. I have a cyber co coverage. Great. But if you violate your brokerage policy that says, don't do that, your E&O carrier is going to say that's negligence. And they're not going to cover you. And so if you just sent help facilitate a hundred thousand dollars going the wrong place, guess what? Yeah. That's on the agent. And the courts have found that an agent can be up to 85% liable if, and when that happens. Damn. So that's one instance that's happening where, where that where agents are doing things they shouldn't be doing. We know that happens. The other thing that's happens that's scarier to me, because that you can prevent, you can, if you're informed, you cannot do that, right? Yep, totally. What's scarier to me is that, so there are plenty of uh, real estate professionals who don't have simple protections set up on their emails like two-step verification or multi-factor authentication, right? And so now knowing that they're all actively trying to be fished by these fraudsters, if there's a successful fish that happens and they don't, and they, they don't have multi-factor authentication turned on in their email. If I'm now in your email account, okay, I've successfully fished you, Kevin, I'm in your email. All I'm doing is just watching, just watching to see who you're interacting with, watching to see the title companies you're dealing with. I'm watching to see your consumers. I'm just paying attention. And when I see you're getting closer and closer to a transaction, I go in and I change your forwarding rules in your email preferences. And now anybody coming from, let's say somebody's writing you from the domain of at world-class title, because you have a transaction going on with us. I can put a forwarding rule in there that says anything coming from at world-class title, move into an RSS feeds folder that you'll never look at 
and mark it as read. So you'll never see those emails back and forth unless I want you to see them. Same thing with your consumer. So now you as the agent, they're pretending, they're communicating back and forth all the while with the title company and your clients, but you're never seeing those emails go back and forth. Damn. And so what they do is they funnel, the, they, they, they monitor, but then they, they, they interject themselves in the communication as you, as the actual agent, with the agent's email account. And they'll then start, uh, they'll, they, they create fake, uh, not only wire instructions, but they create fake closing disclosures. They, they send, I've seen, I saw one recently where they were, did this exact thing for an agent and a good well-known agent here in central Ohio been doing this a long time. They got into her account. They created a fake closing disclosure, sent it to her buyers, $304,000. They were trying to get the buyer to send to them as the fake title company. Whoa. And luckily we intercepted it. We were able to make sure it didn't happen, but that's if that, if we're seeing that, on what we're doing, we're seeing it. I know it's happening all over the place. That, okay, that's crazy. So I guess to like to the, to the punchline, like how do we stop it? Well, it's, uh, it's, you know, there's, there's no magic silver bullet, right? Now, some of this is education. We have to, as, as professionals, we have to do a better job with making sure our, our, what we're doing is more secured. One of the things we've done with SafeWire, so SafeWire uh, originally created, built that back in 2017 and we sold it to title companies. And we sold it to title companies because title companies were the ones really the targets because that's where the money was being exchanged, right? And so a lot of title companies were selling, sending seller proceeds to the wrong place. And it was a significant problem. But title companies have done a better job and have gotten better at protecting that side of the transaction. But as I said before, now this problem begins at the listing. So we, as a as SafeWire, as a company, we are trying to get to the consumer before a fraudster can get to the consumer. And so what we've done with SafeWire is not only protect the title companies, we work directly with brokers to anytime there's a new listing within that brokerage, we do an outbound to the agent to bring the seller and authenticate them with SafeWire we authenticate them at day one of the transaction versus waiting to closing. And when I say authenticate for sellers, what we're doing is we're making sure digitally they are who they say they are, they are where they say they are, and they have access to the account of where they want their proceeds to go to. So we collect that information literally at the listing, and then we deliver it securely to whoever the title partner is in the transaction. So we're eliminating all the back and forth unsecured emails that are happening. Gotcha. Okay. So you're just saying on the very front side before, before that listing's ever put on the, on, on the MLS and then syndicated <laughs> out to the world, like you've already got it. You, you should have them syndicate or I'm sorry, authenticated. And now we already know. So if something doesn't match up, then we That's know right. that it's like if they're in Ohio and all of a sudden we, we get something from somewhere else, then we, we know yep. it's not the right person. Yeah, and it's, and, it's, and it's an education opportunity for the consumer. So at the listing, you can have the conversation with the, you know, the way we instruct on it is, you know, you're as a brokerage, I'm sure your brokerage has some type of wire fraud disclosure in your listing presentation that says, you know, this is a problem. Don't do this. It's right. bad. It's real. Well, we right behind that have a uh, safe wire disclosure that says, you know, wire fraud is your problem, but safe wire is our solution. And so you, you're educating on them, them what to expect in the experience. And so we try to really do that right in the beginning. And then they know, don't send your money or don't share your, you know, try to, um, we're, we're just locking in their information. And with the buyer, it's similar where we're doing secured wire instructions for buyers and we're trying to get to them before somebody else can. And we wrap the whole thing up in a warranty product up to a million dollars that the consumer can pay for at closing if they want. Uh, that just keeps them peace of mind that their protect their transactions protected up to a million dollars. Okay. That's cool. Um, wow. That's awesome. So like, let's just say, um, let, me, let me just ask the question. So I'm an agent, I'm whatever, let's say I'm in Iowa or here in Arizona, it doesn't matter. Uh, and I, I hear this and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I love that. I've, you know, maybe somebody in my office had a client that got burned w one way or the other. Like, how do I, how do I go inquire about safe wire slash bring this as a potential solution to my clients? 
Yeah, um, safewire.com. Chris at safewire.com is my email. I'm happy to, you know, this is, this is uh, I love talking about this stuff um, because I, I look at it as an opportunity just to keep our, our industry and our consumers safer. Because if we can't, ultimately, like someone will, right? And I'd rather it be us. Um, so safewire.com, you know, we're, we're, we're partnering with brokerages to deploy this to their agents. Agents can use it, uh, but we're ideally working directly with the broker. Um, we can do it at the listing. We can do it at the contract. So if they have a contract software they use, we can do it that way. Uh, really, we're just trying to deploy. We're trying to collect and deploy information securely. So we're just getting rid of all of those opportunities. You know, the, the reason we're so vulnerable is because our data is so segmented. Yeah, you brokers have their data, title companies have their data, mortgage companies have their data, and they're just getting us at our weak spot, which is how we communicate. Yeah, it would be so much easier if it was just one system, and you could just use thumbprint. I don't know, I, I scan whatever, uh, or social or something like that to like lock in and authenticate, and everything was in the same place. It'd be great, but. I guess until then, so safe wire sounds like this is a cool thing. So, and yeah, I've had this conversation with so many people over the last couple of years where it's like either they got burned or client of theirs or somebody they, you know, an agent they know in their brokerage um, had a bad experience. So I love it. So safewire.com is where if I'm an agent or a broker, I can go there, take a look at it um, and find out kind of the details of how I can effectively bring, bring this to my clients. The Awesome, man. Anything else? Is there something I missed in the, in, in the, when it comes to like wire fraud or something, something else we should, we should make sure we talk about here before we wrap up? Um, you know, I think, I, I, I think this is an opportunity if we, for, for us as professionals, like I think this is a valid, true value add that can be a differentiator for an agent or a broker in a market to be able to bring this to their, to their clients, to their communities. Um, my, again, I feel that if we don't get our arms around this and lead, somebody is do it. Yeah. Somebody is going to figure out a way to keep these transactions safe. And I'd much per rather prefer it. I have a vested interest in it being us. Yeah, me, me too. Um, so there's no doubt. I was going to say, I was going to say earlier, like it's bad enough. We've got, you know, we've got so much competition in our industry. I, I actually don't view that as bad. I, I think it's a good thing for, for the consumer uh, and should make us better. Although it's going to be bad for some of us in the industry for sure. Um, but to, to think there's like, you know, a Nigerian prince somewhere who's also, you know, coming after the real estate industry, man, it's uh, it's a funny world we live in. Well, Chris, We're attack, my friend, I'm telling you, it's yeah, wild. Man. I, uh, dude, I appreciate it. This is cool. It's obviously not a fun and sexy topic for people, but it's a real one. And it's something we have to, we have to face as, as agents and brokers and something that we have to deal with. And so I love that you brought a solution, um, and that can, that can help, you know, all parties title buyer, sellers, really lenders, obviously, and, and the consumer. So, um, thanks a ton for being here and spend some time with me today. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for listening today. As always, we appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week.